Is this thing on? Everybody, welcome back to the channel. I know I haven't done a video in a while, but you know, with things kind of semi returning to some normalcy, I figured I would start, you know, doing some videos again. I have no idea how long I'm going to do them for. So, the video topic today, what we're going to be covering is the outlook of how jujitsu is going to look for 2020 with this coronavirus. I live here in Oklahoma, here in the Oklahoma City area, is where I train out of and I teach out of experience firsthand what it's like. Um, teaching and running a school during this time. I know some of you guys, depending on where you live or where you train out of, your academy may not be open, may not be open yet. Another thing I'm gonna talk about is feedback that I've gotten from my students, from my other instructors, kind of what do they feel like Jiu Jitsu is gonna be in 2020 and a year from now, what are we gonna do? So if you like this channel, please hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you give this video a like. I do all, well, I say that. I do a lot of jujitsu stuff um, and some other things too, but a lot of jujitsu things. Hopefully, I'll get back to posting some techniques and some sparring videos here fairly soon. But I just kind of want to get this video out there to get something on the channel and get it back going. So, the first topic I want to talk about is schools opening or closing. Unfortunately, with COVID 19, as a lot of you guys knew, we shut down. A lot of jujitsu schools have been affected. They are small business owners and you know they weren't they weren't able to make it you know student uh, members and students either probably had to cancel their memberships and if too many people cancel the memberships then the owner of the academy can't pay his rent he can't pay his bills and therefore just has to has to close the doors so I'm very sorry if anyone was affected by that if you're a school owner or if you're if you're a student and your academy was directly affected by that that is probably one of the worst things that could happen but hopefully Maybe when things start to bounce back, they can get their school back open again or, or you can find another a good school to train at. Let's talk about the schools that are starting to slowly reopen. So I live here, like I said, in Oklahoma City and right now, our, as of today, as I'm shooting this uh, July of 2020, that we're back in the full, I think they call it three, phase three or phase four, we're back fully open. We were very curious of what was gonna happen and we had no idea how our students were gonna react. So when we decided to reopen, it started off kind of slow. You know, I would say at our academy, mainly what got affected was my kids program. So my kids program was the most affected. Um, you know, I had some, you know, obviously we had some cancellations and things like that, but even attendance wise, it's been pretty effective. I would say my kids program is only back to being at half right now. Luckily at our academy, we have a fairly large academy, so we're not limiting the amount of people that can do a class right now. Um, we talked about that, but we just didn't want to do that. We didn't want to limit it if people are still paying a membership for it. My adult programs are back to a pretty good amount. They're probably back to 75 to 80% of what they were. So overall, my students, they feel fairly comfortable training. We do have a few students that are not very comfortable um, training. They're old. They're they're maybe an older of age. They have some pre-existing conditions. As a jujitsu instructor, I can I do not want anyone to come and do jujitsu if they feel like that they're going to be exposed or whatever. I mean, we're doing an activity that we're extremely close in contact with, and if you are deathly afraid or very worried about catching it. Jiu Jitsu is probably not a good place to be. So overall, the school opening has been has been good. Um, I would consider it kind of a soft opening. We did change some of the class times and our cleaning procedures are more strict to help with students feeling comfortable. In Oklahoma, we've had a pretty big spike, um, you know, recently with all of our reopening. So I, I don't know if that's going to make people more afraid to start coming back. I, my adult class is rocking. I think a lot of my students are looking at this aspect of they're trying to get in as much training as they can. Um, I know there's a big fear of the idea that we could roll back into another phase. Um, I know here locally, here in the Oklahoma City area, they've, they've discussed that. This brings me to the next point. What is what is the future of jujitsu possibly look like? I really hope there's either some kind of um, cure that we get, some kind of vaccine or some kind of treatment because I think it's really gonna affect the overall growth of jujitsu. 
and students' growth of jiu-jitsu and even the sport of jiu-jitsu. I think right now, you know, we live in a great time with the internet and people can do instructionals and they can watch videos and they can do a lot of virtual learning, which is fantastic, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a partner to practice with, then it makes it very difficult. And the beautiful thing about training at an academy is you have multiple partners to train with. So you have different sizes, different body types, different styles of jiu-jitsu people like to train. And you know, you can learn everything online and even maybe have one or two training partners, but you just can't you just can't recreate the same environment that you feel inside of academy, unfortunately. So I really hope that we are able to get to a point where we can have academies full blown open because as an instructor, I want to spread the art as much as possible. I want everyone to train. I want everyone to feel the luxury of jujitsu. I really enjoy teaching new people. And one of the best ways to teach new people is to get down on the ground and get, and do a technique with them and get them really seeing the leverage and the beautifulness and the elegance of jujitsu. It's so hard to convey that through a video. If you're like me and you're a nerd and you've already been training for a long time, online videos are great because you already are convinced that jujitsu is awesome. So you're just trying to work on your spider guard or you're just trying to work on your guard passing or your back mount or whatever, right? So you're just getting ready for when it reopens. But for new people, a lot of times they don't even really know that they like jujitsu until a friend has drugged them to a jujitsu class and then they've got to experience it themselves. If schools keep closing down or if schools have to close for financial reasons, I think it's gonna really hinder the growth of jujitsu, unfortunately, which is not what I like to hear as a business owner that makes primarily most of their income through teaching jujitsu. You know, you're gonna have your in-depth and hardcore students, but for the new person, it's gonna be hard for them to experience that only through video. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people who get exposed to jujitsu through video because they're gonna be at home more, but there's just nothing like doing it one-on-one -on -one with a person. With the sport, I, I love watching jiu-jitsu sport. You know, ADCC was gonna be coming up in 2021. The trials were gonna be in 2020. Very curious to see what it's gonna do to the sport. It's hard for even promoters to get a, a, a venue to even put on a thing. I know uh, in Dallas or in Austin and Texas, they've been able to do some fight to wins, which are which are great and I appreciate that because it gives me some form of jujitsu to watch right now. With all the other bigger promotions like ADCC and the bigger tournaments, AGF and or Naga and IBJJF, kind of restricted on where they can do some places because certain states aren't allowing large gatherings to happen and each state has their own definition of what a large gathering is. It's hard, um, you know, we don't know what these tournaments are gonna be like. Students don't know when the next time is they're gonna be able to compete. They're gonna, you know, the sport, the major events like ADCC and Fight to Win, you know, they kind of had a circuit going around. They're now just kind of stuck in one spot. Hope it doesn't really affect the sport. I think the hardcore people like me and the other people that like to watch sport and the people that want to compete in ADCC, Typically, we're crazy enough that we'll find a way to train, whether it's at home, we'll make up stuff at our house, we'll find one or two training partners to come over and practice with. That Those aren't the people that are gonna be really affected. Now, it may annoy them that they can't train with large groups of people and they're gonna think that their growth is being hindered and that's gonna frustrate them, but you're still gonna be able to find a way to train. I still think the hardest people are gonna be the new people, the white belts, the people who had just started before all this had showed up, or brand new people, people who are maybe thinking about trying jujitsu and they were gonna go to a class and they couldn't be able to. Believe it or not, one of the biggest things that has happened at our academy here after us reopening, man, in May and June and July, I've had actually more new people come into the academy wanting to try out a class than I was doing before. And I think that was because people maybe did some research and maybe I just had more people who are interested and you know, over those months that we were closed down, maybe they were gonna come in and so now everyone's coming in at once. That could be a possibility and I maybe, but it just seems like more people are wanting to get into it and my new numbers have gone up. Schools don't ever open again and if we can't, if, and if you're a school owner and you have to close, you're never gonna get that opportunity to share with that person that Jiu Jitsu. I'm worried about the growth of it. I, if, because ultimately, you know, as we all know, if you've been doing Jiu Jitsu long enough, 
the biggest drop off is blue belt. So if you can get a person to a blue belt, that's great. But then, you know, then they'll go on and go whatever, but then a lot of times they quit and you got to have another new person come in behind them to replace that person that quit. And if you never, if you, if you stagger the numbers of new people and it's only the old school and the people that have just stuck around for a while, then there's going to be a detriment to the growth of the art. You won't have those other new people coming in behind. So I, I hope it doesn't hinder the growth. I don't want to hear that as a business owner. Um, but that, those are the people that I think this is going to affect the most. So that's just kind of my thoughts on what Jiu Jitsu is possibly going to turn into here in 2020 and some experiences that we're experiencing here in Oklahoma. Like I said, we're back to reopening. We're back to teaching classes. Our classes are a little bit smaller um, attendance wise and they're a little bit smaller time wise so we can do some better cleaning procedures. But ultimately, a lot of our students came back, which I, you know, I was very thankful for and happy for, and I've had some new students come in. So if you're an academy owner or if you help run a school, please let me know your experiences. Um, what are you guys experience? What are you most worried about right now? If you're a student, what are you most worried about? Put it in the comments down below. And yeah, and hopefully I can get back to doing some techniques and some roles and get you guys some more content. I appreciate all your guys' support and uh, stay hopeful and get to training soon. All right, see you guys.